speaking to this motion on equal rights um, for Australians that was moved uh, by, the member, for, by the Leader of the Opposition and, of course, uh, seconded by the Prime Minister. And I, I want to start by saying that I was actually in your place, uh, Deputy Speaker, just before lunch, listening to uh, many of my colleagues who were speaking to this motion. And I particularly want to uh, just reflect on some of the um, comments that the member for Cowan made here and clearly with, with a lot of emotion. And I think she began her presentation by asking a rhetorical question as to why in 2016 it was felt necessary that we should be talking about uh, preservation of rights and equality before the law um, for Australians. And, and I think I understood clearly where she was coming from and I, I think I might have asked myself that question too when I thought about speaking to this motion. Um, uh, the point that I want to make is that I guess we should never take um, the, the, the battles that we have won and the society that we have built and the one that we've built here in Australia and a democratic society, a society that has uh, uh, enshrined in law uh, equal equality um, for all Australians regardless of their race, colour or their creed or their origin. We should never take it for granted that those hard-fought battles by generations of people before us and indeed members of parliament who have been in this place before us, we should never take it for granted that those battles have, have been won and we no longer need to, to, be, to concern ourselves about, about uh, these inequalities. Um, the truth is that in 2016 and some 20 years after, a similar or an identical motion was uh, moved uh, when, when Prime Minister Howard was Prime Minister. Um, it's probably not a bad idea to take stock and reflect on where we all are, uh, or rather where our community is in relation to the laws of our land. And um, I wanted to reflect on a, on a couple of things. I wanted to reflect uh, on the fact that this country has been built by um, waves of migrants from countries all over the world, myself included. Um, and it, it's a country that is often described as a modern um, multicultural society, an open society, a democratic country, uh, one that um, sees all Australians, uh, in particular those who come from overseas, and there are some seven million Australians who have uh, currently have been born overseas. The one thing that unites us, uh, there, there are lots of things that unite us, but the one thing that enshrines our rights almost in law is the Australian Citizenship Act itself and the fact that we become Australian citizens. And as Australian citizens, we enjoy the same privileges and of course we have the same obligations. So we, we have a society that's based on some very, very um, uh, strong institutions and, and laws that, that protect all of us. The Racial Discrimination Act um, that was put into place uh, over four decades or so ago. All of these laws that have been put together by this parliament and other parliaments that are aimed at ensuring that everyone has, uh, has equality and that we're all protected against things that might be said by others that might be hurtful and offensive or that might degrade us. And um, I understand that very much because, therefore I understand where the member of Cowan was coming from because, you know, I've grown up in this country as, as a foreigner, I became an Australian citizen and now I'm in the Australian Parliament and I think that I represent what the modern contemporary Australian is today. So, and I'm very proud of that. So obviously I'm very keen to ensure that nothing interferes with uh, future generations or current generations of people who are working their way through uh, the integration process here in Australia and are becoming Australians. And I've often said to those in particular who are critical of multiculturalism and who argue that it's a divisive thing and we should abandon it, we, we have uh, sporadic outbreaks of those sorts of debates and we're having one at the moment uh, and we've had many before in the past and we'll overcome it in the same way that we've overcome it in the past. Um, multiculturalism for me and for many Australians is really underpinned by, by these uh, laws and it's also a process by which people become Australians. So it's not a divisive policy, it's, it's four and a half gener uh, decades of, 
government policy that has over the years enjoyed bipartisanship. There have been times, blips along the way, where there have been critics, but by and large there's been bipartisanship on this issue, and I think that that's what underpins the strength of our modern Australian uh, multicultural society. We've also, in that mix, uh, Deputy Speaker, have pursued um, a non-discriminatory immigration policy. And it doesn't, we, don't, we don't select people on the basis of their race or their colour or their creed or their right. We don't exclude them and we don't select them on that basis. We have a non-discriminatory immigration policy. And if you look at the period when the White Australia policy was finally uh, done away with, um, you will see, and I see in my electorate in particular, um, the, the very great and uh, Turkish-speaking Australian community that was actually able to finally come to Australia at, at the abolition of the White Australia policy. And I'm sure that at the time there would have been people in my community who would have thought that this was, this was not a good thing, that we wouldn't have wanted Turkish migrants in this country, that they wouldn't have been capable of integrating or that they would have been future problem makers. I'm, I'm pretty sure I wasn't, at the time I probably was a very young child. But I'm sure that in my neighbourhoods in Broadmeadows, there were people that would not have wanted the Turks to come to Australia. But when you reflect back, and we are now nearing on 50 years of Turkish migration in this country, it cannot be said that the abolition of the White Australia policy, which then allowed uh, Turks and others, non-Europeans or non-whites, to come to this country, cannot be said that there has been a detriment to the Australian community. On the contrary, my community has made a great contribution and they are continuing to make a great contribution as Australians of Turkish descent, as Australians of the Muslim faith. So the idea that at some point in time we reflect and we say, well, we shouldn't have let those people in because there's some problems today, really puzzles me and concerns me. And I'll come to that a little bit later. Um, Deputy Speaker, the 17% um, or, or so of my constituents who are of the Muslim faith have, uh, do come also from Lebanon. And I have uh, many of them in my electorate who are actually very good Australian citizens and who are making, as I said, a very good contribution as Australians to this country. Um, and in addition to that, I'm also very pleased that we are to welcome a very large number, in fact the biggest number, of Iraqi Christians to come to this country in Victoria are living in the federal seat of Cornwall. And they, they have come to, to, to live here under the refugee program. And I have spent a lot of my time in interacting with them, in trying to assist them and teach them about the Australian community that they have come to live in. And yes, many of them come here with preconceived ideas and views about people of the Muslim faith. And I can understand that. They've come out of the Middle East. They, they still have family who are being persecuted. But I have found that it was important, and it is important to me as their federal member, to rather than use that concern and fear that they have, to rather than use it and stir my community, I realise that it is absolutely critical that the leadership that I show in my local community is to ensure that I help them through a process of settling and integrating into Australia that helps them they have, have a positive experience. So I'm very, very um, critical um, of, of anyone who chooses to uh, hijack this debate and turn it into a political attack on other people. I am worried, uh, Deputy Speaker, about the rise of a particular attitude in, this, in our Australian community and in this place because it's now found a, a political voice. I'm very worried that um, uh, uh, succumbing to that is going to be detrimental to the Australian community and the biggest threat to Australia's uh, security or social cohesion is not people's place of birth, but rather 
the racism that is often expressed, found expression in this country, and the failure of leadership to reject it.